I'm sitting here inside of my 2022 Tesla Model X Plaid. This thing is a marvel of modern engineering. And one of the things that stands out to me is the fact that it just drove me all the way across town through Denver city streets, about 11 miles to my son's fencing class. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how mind blowing that actually is and how we got here from being able to just do basic lane centering and highway navigation just a few months ago. And so what you have to stop and think about is the fact that it's actually relatively easy to create a self-driving vehicle. And by that, I don't mean to negate anything that Tesla has done here because what they've done is amazing and it's far beyond what any other automaker has accomplished so far. But when you think about lane centering and what most vehicles on the road have for autonomy, it's actually a pretty trivial thing to do. In fact, you can build an autonomous vehicle that can do things like obstacle avoidance and lane centering with off the shelf hardware for about $35, $40. You don't need anything more complex than a Raspberry Pi and something to train a basic neural network like Python, for example. But that's where Tesla started. That's not where they're at now. Where they're at now is far more interesting and complex. And so this got me thinking about things like stable diffusion, neural networks, uh, chat GPT, Optimus bot, and how the bigger picture of all this sorts of starts to fit together. So we have Tesla starting with lane centering back with autopilot the original days mobile eye and then when they started rolling out their own navigate systems and essentially what you do is you use the camera data and then you take images or videos from that camera data and you annotate it and by annotating it i simply mean you tag it you say this is a stop sign this is a crosswalk this is a lane line. You actually physically draw lane lines across them. And over time, the neural network, given enough input data, actually figures out that, oh, hey, this is a lane line. I should stay within these. You compile that or train the neural network, and then you upload that onto some hardware that can run in real time on the actual car. And again, that doesn't take much compute power. But what if you wanna drive a vehicle around town? You actually want to navigate the complex world around us. Well, that takes much more compute power and a much larger, more incredibly dense neural network. And so we should start with how do neural networks actually even work? Well, again, you take all that training data, annotated photos and videos, that's the input that goes into the neural network. And as you train it, you can think of a neural network as kind of a series of knobs and dials. And the more complex the neural network, the more knobs and dials there are to sort of twist and tune to get the right output from your input. And so what you're looking for is enough data into the training model that when you run your input into it later after the fact, after it's been trained, you get some reasonable output. In other words, the car doesn't run into things it stays between the lane lines. It does predictable things that you expect. Again, that's relatively easy at a small scale if you're doing something simple like lane centering. But our world is much more complex than that. And so you need a much more complex neural network in order to navigate the world around us. So what Tesla started doing in recent months, which is far more fascinating, is instead of annotating individual images from the eight cameras that are around the car, they actually started stitching all the images together. Not only that, but instead of taking the image data, the raw image data, they actually started taking the light data from the camera sensors. See, a camera works by just photons hitting a sensor, and then it takes that and it creates sort of a static image that has different values of light and darkness and color and brightness, that sort of thing. So by taking those individual light values, you create this sort of static image of the world around you. And there's some technology in the artificial intelligence space that's arrived in the past few years called stable diffusion. And what it's able to do is take that static, that light data, and actually turn it into 
kind of a three-dimensional model of what's happening around you. So what Tesla has been able to do using stable diffusion is stitch all the data from the eight cameras together to create sort of a moving three-dimensional world. And this is what has become part of things like the occupancy network. The occupancy network is able to detect things like uh, obstacles in the middle of the road. Uh, I've had it slow and move around bags blowing across the street. It can also detect things like speed bumps. And so this occupancy network is really what's able to sort of allow Tesla to progress at a much faster rate than it was before. I had early versions of full self-driving six plus months ago, and it was far inferior to what they're doing now. The other key piece of the puzzle here is that in order to get enough training data, they have this massive fleet of cars. They have billions of miles of driving data in real world conditions. But when you create this three dimensional video, how do you annotate, how do you tag each of the individual pieces in a reasonable amount of time? It's hard enough annotating and tagging a still image, much less three dimensional 360 videos. And so what they've done is they've built a supercomputer that runs a neural network called Dojo, and Dojo is able to actually annotate these video images on the fly. So you have a neural network that's actually annotating data for another neural network. And if you think about that, that's a massive improvement in the way that you can scale things. And so we're seeing these leaps and bound improvements in the quality of full self-driving, mostly because of that. Now, Tesla has moved into another realm recently with the Optimus bot. And I think their approach is really fascinating here because the Optimus bot uses a similar 3D vision system that the Tesla autopilot system uses. And so you're able to simply kind of retrain the neural network to understand that, okay, Optimus bot has maybe different sensors. It has arms and legs and, and things of that nature, but you're able to understand the world around you much faster than had they started from scratch and created something entirely new. And so the Tesla training data and the systems that they've built to understand machine vision for Tesla vehicles is actually being applied to robotics. And that's really fascinating. And then simultaneously, there's this other kind of monumental shift that's been happening in the artificial intelligence industry. And I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's called uh, ChatGPT. It's uh, based on GPT-3, which is something that's been put out by OpenAI. And essentially what it is, is it's a text-based neural network that has 170 billion pieces of data. Think about this as text data. So documents from all over the internet, Wikipedia, all over, all the places that you would expect you to find a whole bunch of information online. And calling it chat GPT, I think sort of undersells what it's capable of because the system is incredibly complex and it's incredibly versatile. You can ask it to write a product review, ask it to explain quantum physics to you in a simple way. And you can have it create seemingly new pieces of artwork using Dolly, which is sort of a separate system that they've trained. And so the future, I think, is going to be a system where you couple the Tesla vision system or some sort of vision system like that with the power of a GPT. And if you do so, I think you can have human-like conversations with an artificial intelligence while it's also able to navigate and understand the world around us. One of the problems that robotics has faced for years and years is that most of it is choreographed. So if you look at the latest Boston Dynamics videos, they're really impressive. The agility is amazing, but most of that is choreographed. And had you moved one of the boxes or changed the environment too much, it might have a hard time navigating that. It doesn't understand that this thing is a cup. It just says, okay, here's an object within this bounding box. I can interact with it. And so a GPT is able to kind of bridge that gap and understand that, hey, this is a cup. Cups are used for drinking. They typically have handles. You can grasp them with your hand. And so having that corpus of information compared, 
paired with your vision system, I think takes us to an entirely new level of capability in the AI and robotics field. So I'm incredibly bullish about Tesla. I'm incredibly bullish about the future of artificial intelligence and navigate on autopilot full self-driving. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you'd like me to take a deep dive on any of these subjects, I love talking about this stuff. Hope to see you soon. Thanks.